And I think it's so interesting because, like, um, I was watching uh, Dick Gregory. He was mm-hmm. talking about a, a, a hunger strike he did. Probably It was probably some decades ago. Yeah. I can't remember why, but he, he was a believer in fasting. Before I learned about fasting, I always thought it was interesting. People would do these hunger strikes, and I'm like, man, these people are, you know, they really go hard. Now yeah. it's like, you know, it's kind of like a great tool you could use to to – Help. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and we could talk about it a little bit more when we go on, because um, in pre- in preparing, um, I watched a lot of Dick Gregory. Oh, OK. Um, and he, it was for uh, he fat. I think he fat. He fasted. He he um, he liquid fasted for almost a year um, because what he said was, I will not eat any solid food until the Vietnam War was over. Oh, okay. And it was after he said it, he realized, man, I hope they hurry up and end this war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then and then he and then in also in in another video that I watched, he started getting into the spiritual powers behind fasting. And you know, he was that type. He didn't even if you were drink if you were taking in liquid, he was like, that's not a fast. That's right. a water diet. Yeah. <laughs> said, Whoa, hey, hold up, man. Yeah. <laughs> Gregory was hardcore with it, brother. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, hey, you know what? Uh, it's a huge difference between the two. A lot of people misconstrue the Bible. When the Bible talks about fasting, they think the Bible's talking about water fasting, but it's not. It's talking about dry, what they would call dry fasting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. so, you know, that's what the biblical characters did. And when you look at ancient you know, our, 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 the ancient fasters, they weren't, they weren't doing water. They weren't putting electrolytes in the water. You know what I mean? They were just, yeah. so I feel them. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that, like, that's the next phase for me. Like that's the next stage to go into. Um, yeah. Um, I did, uh, I did a six day dry fast and it was enlightening. The mm. thing, the thing that's really interesting about it, if you've never tried to dry fast, is you don't get hungry. So mm-hmm. it's it's actually it's not as hard as a water fast. Honestly, what makes mm-hmm. a dry fast hard is that uh, you just you, you go through the detox symptom. The detox symptoms are crazy, so you really gotta be prepared. Mm. But you're not really gonna be hungry, and then of course you start getting thirsty. And I think one of the biggest problems we have with dry fasting is we're indoors a lot. We don't spend enough time in nature, you know, and the way you get water when you dry fast is, is uh, really being in nature. You can absorb it through your skin and then you can also manufacture it through your breath, but you really need to be outside. Mm. Oh man. I'm glad you said that. I didn't even realize that. Um, see, cause when, when during our, 21 day um hunger strike we lived outside Mm. so we 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 set up an encampment um operation hunger strike right at the corner of uh, 62nd street and 12th avenue in miami and that's that's just a notorious corner you know okay um if you're familiar with uh uh, first 48 the tv show Mm, yep um, that they love filming right there at that corner in, which is which is uh, also known as the pork and bean projects. Okay. Um, so so living outside, I didn't realize um, how much how much energy I guess as you just described and and sustenance we were getting just from being outside. Because once I'm once once I that was for straight twenty one days. So we didn't go anywhere. We lived right there. Wow. And. Um, and I remember my drive home, which is only about 20 minutes from that spot. I remember driving down the street and, you know, the greens were greener. The streets looked different. Everything was different. And, um, huh. and it was it was just it was a whole other uh, use the word enlightening, man. It was it was just a whole other enlight- enlightening that happened for me um, that I didn't realize, you know, the mundane drive down the street became this whoa. Like I'm sitting here in an IMAX movie, man, and a, you know, with the with the big giant screen, and, right. and I'm sitting in the car, watch, looking like I'm watching a movie. And I know all of it is attributed to just being becoming a whole other kind of a person, uh, 
on a cellular level yeah. after 21 days of living outside and just drinking water. Definitely. The other key, too, to being outside is grounding. You know about grounding? No, no. Uh, grounding. So, like, we're not born with shoes, right? Right. What they what they found was um, during, I think, maybe like the 1960s, when we started when we started shifting from wearing leather shoes to, to mm-hmm. wearing the sneakers, gym shoes. OK, right. The the uh, the sickness in America started to increase rapidly because mm-hmm. the actual rubber sole disconnects you from the earth. So we all talk about how we're energetic beings and everything. But we don't really we really don't get the concept. We really are energetic creatures, meaning we have electricity that that runs through us. It's a different type of electricity than the dirty stuff we use for our houses. But every elect every electrical circuit needs a ground. Every single one. You can't if you create a if you have an electrical circuit that doesn't have a ground, it doesn't function properly and it becomes very dangerous. And so just like all the creatures on the earth they're all connected to the earth through, through their, their feet. And we are, we're supposed to be as well. Um, if, uh, I, I, uh, I was listening to an old, old, uh, well, it was a, it was a ancestor, one of the native Americans, one of their, um, you know, grand granddaughters, I think it was talking about how their grandma would say when she, when they would come into the, um, uh, the, t- the hut or the TP or whatever they would call it. Right. Uh, take your shoes off, they'll make you sick. Mm. And she, you know, she didn't, she just thought her grandma was crazy or whatever. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But what she was alluding to is that it, it disconnects you from the earth. And the earth uh, gives us what's called negative ions. And all of mm-hmm. your cells use negative ions. The, the, uh, um, it's a negative charge that the cells use. Uh, and then what happens when you're not connected to the earth? You build up all these positive ions in your system, and it makes you sick. Mm, makes so, perfect sense. Makes yep. perfect sense, man. I mean, the toes look like roots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> they look yeah. at you and call them digits, right? Because they separate. So that makes perfect. It just it just reminded me of of when I was first introduced to your uh, your YouTube channel, blog, and um, and website was through a friend of mine actually one of my colleagues and she had just come back from being away for 30 days in Jamaica. And, um, and, and when she came back, she just looked so different. Mm. You know, she went because her father had passed away. No, I'm sorry. God forgive me. Her father was sick. Her father has not passed away. Her father was sick. And, um, so she went there to be with him and she came back, brother. And she just had this radiant look about her. And, um, she just looked so different. Her disposition was different. So I asked her, I was like, Ashley, you know, yo, what are you doing? Like, like, you know, I'm, what's, what's you, I know you're doing something different, man. You, you working out, you want to, she says, she was like, man, brother Phil, I just did 20 days of straight water while I was in Jamaica. Mm. And at the time I was already trying to wrap my brain around doing an, an extended fast. Like the longest I've gone, I'm Muslim. So even now it's Ramadan and starting to get back into the actual fast, which which you, you just a little bit, you gave me about the dry fasting. I never put the Muslim fast of Ramadan in the context of a dry fast because that's what it is, at least yep. from sun up to sundown, yep. right? Which is a huge difference than when you're actually drinking or taking in anything else, right? So she tells me that she had been gone for... um. Or, or rather, she had she was she did twenty days, and immediately I was like, "What? <laughs> you know, you did what? You did that? Like, well, if Ashley could do it. I know I could do it, but I don't know if I could do it. You know." What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, so what happened was she says, "Well, you, you know," she says, "You know, the I had already been, you know, I'm I, I'm a, a student to a degree of Dick Gregory. I I love Baba Dick Gregory, you know." Um, and, and so I've been watching his videos over the years and I met him a few years ago, a couple of times. And so that part of the fasting has always intrigued me about him. Um, 
and and so I was already watching some videos. She said, so she tells me about a healthy alternative. You ever heard of a healthy alternative? I was like, yeah, I hear about them all the time. <laughs> <She's> <laughs> like, no man, the YouTube. She said, oh, there's a YouTube. Yeah, check this brother out. And and so I started watching the videos, and so I saw the, you know, uh, I watched a couple of the videos, and I was like, yo, I gotta start. I need to prepare myself to do this. But in the context of the day to day and the family and, you know, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a, you know, I got a few businesses, um, I hold down a nine to five, all kinds of things, you know, just the daily regimen of life, right? I was like, I don't know. And and the the fast of Ramadan is already a challenge. And then I did six days maybe years ago just on my own. Uh, No, I'm sorry, not on my own, but um, as at the time. Um, I'm a member of the Nation of Islam, so the minister was very, very sick. And so we as a nation fasted for uh, for X amount of days, um, you know, for the health, fasted and prayed for the health of the minister. And that was when he came through from that cancer. Okay. And during that day, I did six days. And um, so, but that was in the 90s. So here I am now and I'm ready to go to a next level and whatnot. So she tells me about the web, about a healthy alternative. And I started watching the videos, brother, and I was just so inspired at people who looked regular and normal. <laughs> they were human beings, and, they were just, <laughs> and you know, they, and and you know, to hear, to see the picture of somebody coming from two hundred and eighty pounds, and you know, to just discipline yourself, and then now to watch them with you, and and they're just talking about their journey. And how they're more health conscious, and then even some have gone from that life to now I'm gonna be a personal trainer. Now mm-hmm. I'm going I'm becoming a nutritionist. Now a healthy alternative is now becoming the lifestyle mm-hmm. that they're living. And so then you know just you know so I I just so you know, I, I know you know you hear from people all the time about man I watch you you know the videos and they change my life, and you know you I don't I don't think you can ever really hear that enough when you're in this kind of a work. So I just wanted to tell you that um, watching your videos inspired me to, to, to delve in deeper into me personally getting on this journey, right? And so then a few, I'm telling you, man, it couldn't have been two, more than two weeks later in the process of me, you know, because what, you know, once you get turned onto a website or, or a, a YouTube channel, it, t- it becomes the favorite channel for a minute, right? right. So right. watching the channel for a while. And then, and then the idea came up, Brother Chris, um, from a group of brothers. I belong to an organization called the Circle of Brotherhood. And our motto is Black men solving their own community's problems. And, and some of the brothers went to a candlelight vigil here in Miami that was held by um, a, a sister named Tangela Sears. And, and Tangela has an organization called Mothers of Murdered Children. So there was this annual candlelight vigil that they do. And at the candlelight vigil, um, when they were handing out the candles to the mothers who were coming up, there was like 40 mothers that came up. And one of our brothers, Brother Albert, who tells us one of the Hunger Nine, who tells the story probably the best, he was there and he just described you know, it's one thing to hear the sound of a mother wailing for the loss of her child, but to hear 40 mothers mm. there crying, you know, over the loss of their child who's been lost to gun violence. Um, and then there was another young, another brother by the name of Blaze Carter and Blaze's five-year-old son, whose name is King Carter. I'm mentioning these because people that are watching, you can go through and, and look back and, you know, see the documentation. So King Carter was, I think he was actually like six years old or, you know, give or take. And, um, and so his father came up to speak Blaze and Blaze is an artist down here in Miami who's got quite a few videos, et cetera. So he's already got this voice in this persona, right? Right. And he spoke and he says, man, I'm tired. Everybody, you know, the politicians say they're going to do this and the, you know, the police say they're going to do that and nobody's doing anything. And, and he just spoke from a, from a place that, that touched the brothers that were there so much, in addition to hearing the mothers, who many of those mothers walked up and there were no men there. It was as if they had the children by themselves, Uh. right? And so as the brothers left, 
you know, three of the brothers that was there, our lead organizer, brother Leroy Jones, our brother Albert Campbell, and then our brother, uh, um, uh, brother Chicken George. We call him Chicken George. He's also a comedian. Um, uh, so brother George, Albert, and brother Leroy were walking, and they said, we got to do something. And that's when it hit brother Leroy. He's like, man, we should do a hunger strike. Because out of us nine brothers, it was only three of us out of the nine who, who didn't do some serious time in prison, you know? So um, in the research, the brothers found it, there's never been a hunger strike by black men outside of prison walls uh -huh. that we can find. And part of the, the purpose of a hunger strike is to bring attention to an issue <clears throat> and to also um, to, to elicit feelings of guilt in others about either doing something or not doing something, right? Um, so long story short, the brother, the brothers came back and they brought the idea to, you know, a small group of the brothers within the circle of brotherhood. And the minute that I heard it, uh, brothers like, so we already got two brothers that are on. I was like, brother, you got three. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm in. Yeah. Because I'm watching, I'm wrapping my head around this and I'm like, I'm watching a healthy alternative and, and I'm listening to Dick Gregory and I'm like, how am I going to do this? And I don't know how, I, and when the idea came, I was like, I'm, I'm all in because I know it has a spiritual, a mental, as well as a physical implication. And then now we're talking about fasting in the Holy Quran, the Muslim book of scripture. It says, um, there's a, there's an ayat or a verse that says fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you that you may guard against evil. So often we think of that as personal, right? Mm. And of course it is because fasting will reduce your urges um, for so many other things, right? It'll quell the appetite of the stomach, which is the first appetite. You get a grip of that, you can get a grip of the other appetite. But then in my mind, it was this other guarding against evil, which is the evil of, of violence, uh, gun violence, particularly in our community that has just become the norm. Right. So now right. Right, Dick Gregory and his talking about the spiritual qualities of fasting. It was like, okay, so there's a spiritual heart surgery that we need to do that is not, there's no, there's no physical tools for that. That can only, that's, that's in the same, you know, tradition of Jesus going on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights and Moses going on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. And for Prophet Muhammad and peace be upon all of them to take on fasting as a spiritual, um, tool mm. that's when it was like you know what i'm all in and the next thing you know brother we were on the block under the tents <laughs> one days that's, and, um, yeah you know, there's there's no coincidences man like that's the, right the fact that you had you know you your friend ashley sister ashley had kind of mentioned yes, yes. fasting you got on a healthy alternative the wheels start turning. You were already That's right. you know, into it from, from listening to uh, Dick Gregory. And then, boom, here's your opportunity. And, and it's funny right. that, y'all, that you, you guys did 20, you said 21 days, right? You said you did 21 yeah. days? Yeah, 21. yeah, 21. You know, because um, yes, there's, there's a lot of people who feel like 21 days is kind of a magic number. Um, you know, it's just, it's just, it, yeah. there's, when it comes to fasting, things happen in, in uh, cycles. You know, you can't you can't get the spiritual enlightenment from fasting in three days. It just doesn't it just doesn't work that way. No. And so, it like that. yeah. So in order to get some of the more enlightening things that you were able to to achieve, you have to do those longer fasts. And um, I'm, I mean, yeah, it's where I, I think I believe that we are three three part beings, spiritual or energetic physical and mental, you know? And so That's fasting right. has the ability to help cleanse every aspect of your being. And I talk about like mental trauma and things like that. So you, you, you got a mother who's dealing with the loss of a child or you have an individual who's dealing with any type of trauma yeah. and you can literally fast and it will help strengthen your, your mental constitution. It'll help you uh, energetically release you know, some of those those bad vibrations associated with the trauma and you can heal in so many different ways from fasting. It's so it's so amazing. Absolutely. Uh, we I think we tend to focus on the weight loss a well, lot. You know, Go ahead. 
No, I, I was just, it just you know, to, to add on to what you're saying, I mean, everything in the physical world is a reflection of things on the spiritual world. Right. So if fasting uh, allows you to detoxify on a physical plane, then it must also help you to detoxify on a spiritual plane as you know, as you just broke down. So thanks for, you know, for, for adding a little more light on that. That's exactly what happened. 